<laughs> it's just you, me, and the breakdown. So remember last video, I posted, it was just a breakdown of the color from the finished product. Today we're going to go a step by step on how it is done. But from the actual artist's uh, process. So this is from, these are screenshots from them doing a speed art of this. So let's go through it step by step. First of all, the artist has decided to actually draw the characters fully, like line them, um, you know, add all the lines, and then add in the the shape of the character, the outline shape of the character afterwards. So keep that in mind. Um, that's probably the fastest option. It's probably the best option if you're a beginner, especially to is keeping your art making sure that your art stays the way that you draw it and you don't um, compromise it by just starting with giant shapes. For example, you could just start by trying to draw the fingers in in block shapes like this, but you can lose that integrity because drawing in shapes, in block shapes like a painter style, um, is actually a little more tricky. Um, than doing it this way. However, when you get to that painter style, it's a lot quicker. So, this is the first step. So choose a base color, the main color of the character, and simply outline the whole thing. Okay, next step. So once that's done, they then fill in that entire character. So then it becomes this silhouette. And here you can see on this side here, we got tails. Um, they were doing tails on that side. Cool, so you can see a striking silhouette. Now notice, if we zoom in, these are all screenshots, so it's pretty rough, but you see this little this little gap right there? That's because the um, brush that they're using is like a chalk, a chalk brush. So instead of being a smooth, flat line like this, okay, um, it's more akin to something like that. Um, not exactly like that though, it's more chalky, uh, more refined. Um, those types of brushes are actually a little more difficult to come by, but um, that's a video unto itself. So let's go back to the process. Okay, so once we've done with that, we then move on to the next step. And the next step is adding in the secondary colors. So here notice that we are not using, if you remember last time, we're not using a um, direct white. We're using an off-white color. I think that's a good practice. Never have pure whites. Um, I'm not sure. I can't give you a good reason why, but it's perhaps easier on the eyes. Um, and then it allows you, when we see later, when we actually do add the pure white um, for highlights on Sonic, um, it looks nicer. And there's more, there's a difference. All of a sudden, the the white used on his gloves uh, don't mix with the the highlights. Okay, so notice here we're, we're simply blocking out the shapes. So in the same way that we outline the character, we're outlining these these inner inner colors uh, with lines. So you're allowed to do that. And notice how they instead of just Instead of outlining the entire hand like that, they just went boop boop, and then they're gonna fill in the rest of this a little later. You can see in this part here, boom. Okay, now we can see they're doing the same thing with, so we've, we've added the white, all the white parts, and they would have done that on a separate layer. Okay, so the white's on one layer, the blue's on one layer. Now the tan colors are on another layer. Okay. And we'll move on from that. And now we have uh, the rest of the colors. So you're going to systematically, when you're coloring in a character, you're going to do each color on a different layer. This is what I would recommend. Uh, because we're going to be slightly editing different colors, uh, but only different colors. We don't, and we'll, as we'll get to it in a second. But you can see now, with these simple flats, right, 
most like a lot of people when they color in normally this is how they do it um, but you can see that with the colors used it's actually quite nice like that looks really appealing especially in this particular art style here the way they've drawn Sonic and Tails so now let's move into the more nuanced stuff hopefully that all makes sense so far okay so the highlights so we're adding in the highlights they've also added a blue background and they've gotten rid of those those lines so all these rough lines here okay we're getting rid of them completely boom they're gone and instead we've now had to figure out and replace them with shadows that represent the same thing okay so let's just yeah that's probably not super helpful but if I was to look at I'll just get this color here if I was to look at this this glove for example and I'm trying to depict a way that you can tell that that glove's a glove without without drawing these lines okay because we're going to get rid of them in a second the best way to do that is through the use of shadows so I might put a shadow here okay maybe one here as well okay and in especially with with large like see this this line and this line here okay those are the overlapping lines that we have to differentiate so a good way to just fix all of that is to maybe color in that here to simplify the mind into seeing because now um, now this line and this line are implied by this shadow this shadow here okay that shadow implies those those two lines and this art style is good because it also helps you to think where a shadow might go in order to like with a simple shape it's it's a good training exercise honestly so copying this art style actually helps your artistic knowledge okay and so if we look at the actual picture itself what the next step that's what they've opted out to do okay and that makes sense so I think I had mine here okay and they've gone for these two lines here to add to kind of act it like those uh, these two lines where they intersect and then instead of just having the glove morph into the cuff they've added a shadow here as well okay and then you can see here that's yep so they've done that Kind of similar to what I did before okay so with that you have to do it with everything so Sonic's head here you know it curves like this and his spike is like that and the way they differentiated the the, the head from the, the body was just by adding in this shadow here okay and then when you zoom out it's implied it's like okay clearly that's his head because the shadow goes up like that you can imagine it and then he has another shadow here and so they, they're visually distinct okay now um, and then with this if you can get away with those simple lines like we talked about where they just go like that um, here's another shadow that's used to differentiate so the tail is behind um, his body here and instead of just leaving a line like that they, they put a little shadow there his leg okay it would look it would look silly it would just look like one giant amorphous blob but instead they put the the shadow there to differentiate okay I want you to start thinking okay think in your little brains for once in your lives think about how the shadows can be used to differentiate okay and then um, but again sometimes you can break that by putting a simple line like that you don't have to try and conjure up an elaborate an elaborate uh, shadow that will signify this is a spike 
that spikes behind you can, like this is such a good this is such a simple drawing it's it's so simply done but it's very it's complex they opted they're like yep the line there will work we'll leave a line and then we'll only shadow we'll put a shadow in there and then that it just represents so much in visually just to look at but it was you know you have to think about it oh it's just mm. drawing is so much more difficult when you don't have lines so that's why painting is generally <laughs> that's why painting is difficult but i think this artist here um she is a painter first and then has gone back down and sort of gone from like very complex paintings here to like simple simple sonic drawings so she has the fundamentals down first and then does this second so um these things probably just come naturally but for us us little fools this us little amiibos amoebas <laughs> just floating around in space we got to think hard about this okay and that brings me to my second um, and, and you can do that look 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 at this glove look at ah there's just so much you could you could break down okay but look at each one and think about how it can be used okay this brings me to my second the second way to differentiate lines so if we get rid of that look look at this what are we what are, what, what are we supposed to do we're supposed to i mean we could put a shadow here yeah you're right little johnny we could put a shadow there and we could maybe put a shadow here maybe the one that goes here kind of but then we have to start shading and everything and it gets a little tricky why don't we just add in some highlights and that's where these white lines come in we're using ultimate white not off-white okay and we now use those those highlights as differentiating lines being able to differentiate between the two colors so now and they also added a shadow here okay and that works it's more striking if you use the the white lines here sonic's eyebrow boom put a little thing in there represents the eyebrow represents the the, the middle part of his eye okay separates the ear from the rest of the head also notice this back part of the ear they used a shadow just like we did here okay let me use a different color so you can see because you c i don't think you can see all right boom nope boom and boom any more of them there's another one okay that's kind of one but not really okay so these white lines here can be used to simplify the space um, here they've opted out it's just a little bit of flexing here on their part they just added this line here not necessary because the blue is clearly uh, separate from his arm and so, and so that works here's a cool one just a simple line it's like one two three three lines and it, and it represents the entire back of his shoe that complex shoe mold at the back mm. it's good it's really good tails i'm sorry i haven't spent much time with you um remember you have those ultra dark spots which you can add but don't think too hard about that if that if that stresses you out just focus more on the shapes and now the final the grand final the gradient the sweet sweet gradient what i would recommend for now when you're adding a gradient maybe you're doing a fan character is to get the white make a new layer okay and get the airbrush okay zoom it out and then on one like on the blue layer let's say here we're going to use overlay okay and we just go kind of like that okay now obviously if this was on the layer it would look something like that so i'm doing it on one layer it looks kind of 
silly, but it would look something like that, okay? And that has the same kind of effect as, as this one here. Now, uh, this one's a lot lighter, and so that's something you just have to, to practice. Um, do that of your own. Okay, so you can adjust it. Let's say we just want it to look like that. It's super subtle super subtle and you can do it wherever you want wherever you think is necessary maybe you want a little bit of highlight back here maybe a little one here you know and that's it maybe a little bit on the leg okay you can do that if you want just have fun with it that's the part that kind of doesn't make sense you know like um like an anime sunset has crazy like lens flare type super warm colors you know in the afternoon and it looks really nice it doesn't make any sense but it's kind of the same kind of creative license that you get to have um with with the overlay um airbrush tool anyways i hope this was useful next part we'll look at a surefire way to have the correct color levels each time so that you can color in your fan character whoever you want See you in the next one.